Francesc Losapio from the ESCO Secretariat, and I will guide you through the changes introduced with ESCO version 1.1, which was released at the end of January 2022. ESCO needs to be continuously updated in order to stay up to date with the changes in the labor market. ESCO version 1.1, therefore, pursues the goals of reflecting changes in the labor market with new occupations that have been emerging in the past years and or occupations that have changed in nature due to digitalization, the greening of the economy and the consequences of the COVID pandemic. It also reflects changes in curricula with new knowledge and skills emerging in the domain of education and training. And it also addresses changes in terminology, meaning changes in terms referring to occupations and skills. ESCO version 1.1 also addresses requests and requirements from implementers using ESCO to provide services in the digital labor market, and it is a very good opportunity to correct identified mistakes, such as misspellings of wrong metadata, part of ESCO version 1.0. ESCO version 1.1 is uh, mainly divided into two strands, content update and the quality review. When it comes to the content update, you can see here how uh, that many new concepts have been introduced in ESCO. 68 new occupations, 354 new skills, 158 knowledge concepts. But also, some concepts have been made obsolete as they might not be uh, fit anymore within the classifications or they are not relevant in the labor market. Moreover, uh, a, target a targeted quality review was performed on the skills and occupations pillar pillars of ESCO version 1.C in order to identify and address quality issues with skills and knowledge concepts, occupations, and in the relationship between skills and occupations. Such issues range from problems related to uh, formulations of skills, such as ambiguity or conceptual issues, uh, issues related to the labels with uh, uh, overlap between preferred terms and non-preferred terms, duplications, the issue of the granularity of skills with some skills concepts that are too granular almost at the level of tasks, the use of relationships between skills and qualifications, the mapping of occupations to the ESCO classifications and the usability level of skills. The content update process started with um, what we call sector prioritization. The Commission identified a number of sectors, a number of key sectors, uh, where, to focus, where to focus the uh, update of ESCO, uh, which are the sectors that are more relevant for the European economy. For each of these sectors, desk research was performed in order to identify the main trends in skills, competencies and occupations emerged in the labour market since the release of ESCO version 1.0, which, as you know, was released in 2017. Based on the desk research on the evolution of such sectors, it was possible to define gaps between the content of ESCO version 1.0 and the evolution of the labour market and scope improvements. Very important also was the feedback received from domain experts that supported the Commission in analyzing the data coming from the labour market. And thanks to the work of the experts, it was possible to create new content, which was then validated by sectoral experts and by the two ESCO governance bodies, the ESCO Member States Working Group, which was consulted, and the ESCO Maintenance Com Committee, which were consulted between the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021. When looking at the information sources for the content update, we can mention desk research, publications from international organizations, industry reports, but also very important online job vacancies, which give uh, a snapshot of a real time snapshot of the evolution of the labor market. Very important also the feedback coming from uh, domain experts, meaning public employment services, sectoral associations, social partners, but also organizations implementing ESCO within their services through the ESCO forum available in the ESCO website or bilateral contents. 
The blueprints for sexual cooperation skills are a very important source of information as they research, target, trends related to competences and skills in specific sectors. The update of ESCO also benefited from uh, support from different director generals of the Commission. And in the course of the day cycles, we have organized several targeted webinars. Uh, competence frameworks, such as the European Competence Framework on Public Procurement, were taken into account for the evolution of ESCO. And the Commission was also supported by uh, expert groups working in particular on the skills hierarchy and on the revised structure on transversal skills. ESCO version 1.1 has a specific focus on the twin transitions, greening and digitalization of our economy as they heavily impact the labor market and are changing the nature of different jobs in the European Union. This is why ESCO version 1.1 includes a first draft of a taxonomy for skills, for green skills, skills for the green economy. And a large number of new concepts was targeting digital technologies and digitalization of sectors. There was specific focus on emerging technologies at sectoral level, but also a general focus on occupations and skills for researchers. And as version 1.1 also reflects the increasing importance of transversal skills for employers with the introduction of a new model for transversal skills and competences. Finally, a specific focus was placed on the use of artificial intelligence for <clears throat> the maintenance of the classification to improve efficiency of the continuous improvement process. The first time AI was applied to the continuous improvement of ESCO. We're now going to look at specific worst trends of uh, specific uh, updates uh, and um, uh, sub sub sectors of ESCO version 1.1. And the first one is the new framework for transversal skills and competence. Uh, in 2019, uh, the Commission started working on a revised framework for transversal skills, which will uh, address the increasing importance of transversal skills in our in our society and in the labor market. An expert group was created to support the Commission in defining a new terminology for transversal skills. Uh, report, the report of the expert group was presented to the Member States Working Group and to the Maintenance Committee and the BESCO and to the uh, European Qualification Framework Advisory Group, the EQFAG, during the course of 2021 and represented the base for the update of the transversal skills results in ESCO. Moreover, uh, the update of transversal skills benefits from the results of the quality review of the ESCO skills pillar. And uh, the final result was a new model of transversal skills, uh, which led to complete identification of a new set of transversal skills terms, which were then developed with descriptions and scope notes based on the ESCO terminological guidelines. The new model is a three levels model, which includes six top level categories. The category of core skills, the category of um, thinking skills, the category of social and communication skills, the category of self-management skills, the category of physical and manual skills, and finally, the new category for life skills and competences. At the second level, each category is divided into different clusters for a total of 24 clusters that you can see in the diagram uh, on the right. Finally, at the third level, a total of 96 terms, transversal skills terms, is placed under each cluster. And this corresponds to um, the final thesaurus of transversal skills part of ESCO. Finally, the transversal skills thesaurus was integrated within the ESCO skills pillar and the ESCO architecture. Uh, and to this end, uh, it was decided to replace the uh, classification of attitudes and values that was part of ESCO version 1.0 with the new transversal skills hierarchy. 
This is why uh, the current skills hierarchy uh, published on the ESCO portal, part of ESCO version 1.1, includes four subclassifications. One classification for knowledge, one classification for work-related skills, one classification for languages, and one classification for transversal skills. The reason why attitudes and values were replaced is that many of the concepts uh, were part of attitudes and values are also included in the new framework of transversal skills, and therefore the uh, subclassification of attitudes and values has become obsolete. While for language skills and knowledge, it was decided to maintain the subclassification of language skills and knowledge as a separate entry point for language competences in ESCO. The integration of the Intervestor Skills Framework in the ESCO Skills Pillar led to work, uh, uh, an update of the existing transversal skills in version 1.0, which were either reused or removed or transformed to cross-sectoral skills and linked to occupations. Moreover, a first approach on contextualization based on artificial intelligence and semantic similarity was deployed in order to classify uh, narrower terms under the new introduced transversal skills. Another important element of ESCO version 1.1 is the definition of a taxonomy of skills for the green transition. Uh, this is an action that comes directly, it finds its base directly in the European Skills Agenda. European Skills Agenda uh, has a specific action, Action 6, dedicated to the skills supporting twin transitions, and within different sub-actions, uh, indeed mentions the tax taxonomy of skills for the green transition. When it comes to green skills, uh, the first point, uh, the first point to note is the definition of what green skills are. Um, and to this end, uh, for the taxonomy of green skills part of ESCO, uh, the Commission used a definition uh, drafted by Sadefop back in 2012 and supported also at OCD level, which defines green skills as the knowledge, abilities, values, and attitudes needed to live in, develop, and support a sustainable and resource efficient society. In concrete terms, we can distinguish three broad categories of green skills. There are skills that are technical by nature, meaning that they address the use of green technologies. Uh, for example, the skill design water conservation system is a skill that uh, refers to uh, the use of specific technology for water conservation. We have then skills that are more cross-sectoral, meaning that address the uh, transversal topic of sustainability across sectors. Example, research and innovation skills, uh, use of innovative uh, methods to, for example, reduce the use of resources. This is kind of a cross-sectoral skill. And finally, we have what we call the transversal skills, meaning competences that relate to uh, environmental awareness of, of the British citizen, and that are also a very important part uh, of the taxonomy for green skills. To define a list of green skills in the classification, uh, an uh, hybrid approach was, uh, was followed, combining uh, human validation and data science techniques. First of all, uh, human labeling of all ESCO skills uh, as green was conducted during the course of 2021. Uh, the 14,000 uh, skills knowledge concepts of ESCO were reviewed against the definition uh, of green skills presented in the previous slide. And this led to the identification of a first set of green skills in ESCO. In parallel, um, a machine labeling activity took place to create a second list of green skills. To this end, uh, a machine learning classifier was built by pooling different resources uh, on uh, green skills, such as studies, uh, existing taxonomies, uh, work done at international level to define green skills, and based also on the data coming from the labor market, it was possible to identify and map against the ESCO taxonomy a list of green competencies. Uh, this led to the definition of a data science-driven taxonomy of green skills. 
The two lists were then compared against each other and differences between the two were manually evaluated in order to define the final list of skills for the green transition part of ESCO version 1.1. Overall, the taxonomy of green skills part of ESCO version 1.1 includes 386 skills and 185 knowledge concepts. And you can see in the slide the different types of skills that we have in ESCO. Technical skills, such as installing offshore renewable energy systems. Cross-sectoral skills, such as using sustainable materials and components. and transversal skills related to environmental awareness, such as engaging others in environmental friendly behaviors. Third, uh, third element of ESCO version 1.1 is the definition of a set of skills for researchers. Uh, this is also uh, an activity that uh, has its foundation in the European Skills Agenda. Action 5 of the European Skills Agenda, uh, rolling up the European Universities Initiative and of Skilling Scientists, Mention between different sub actions, the definition of taxonomy of skills for researchers, allowing statistical monitoring of brain circulation across Europe. And at the same time, the new com the communication on the new European research area includes an action dedicated to support research careers through mobility schemes training, which includes, on the one hand, the definition of a classification of skills for researchers in ESCO and at the other hand, the level of a competence frame for scientists. The definition of uh, what research skills are, um, as well, uh, was conducted through different methodology, methodolo hybrid methodology, combining uh, experts uh, in manual labeling and data science. Um, when it comes to defining the research skills, uh, an expert group supported the Commission uh, in defining a first list of skills through literature review and mapping to the Eurodoc transfer of skills and competence matrix. Uh, this led to definition of a set of competencies for researchers, which were then mapped against the ESO classification. And <clears throat> this list was then filtered and maintained, uh, simplified, in order to arrive at uh, a final list of skills, which was then submitted uh, to consultation uh, to online service and member states consultation. This led to the definition of a final list of 37 skills uh, in ESCO, which were then um, further described uh, and uh, uh, adapted to the terminological groups of ESCO. Um, you can see in this slide examples of uh, on the left of new skills that were included in ESCO version 1 and 1 as part of the research uh, domain, such as, uh, for example, the skills related to open science uh, and to managing the research data. But also on the right, you can see existing skills of ESCO version 1.0, which were retained as part of this new taxon. Moreover, the Commission defined a set of occupations that can be uh, considered as research occupations. Uh, and for this exercise, um, the approach was to combine indeed human labeling and data science techniques. Um, first, the experts identified, I manual identified, uh, a number of occupations within ESCO <clears throat> that can be considered as part of the research domain. Uh, for example, by looking at the skills associated to these uh, uh, occupations and especially looking at uh, how many and if research skills are also considered essential to these occupations, but also uh, only searching for occupations in the ESCO, in the ESCO occupation pillar. And then the list of occupations identified through uh, the ESCO uh, dataset was mapped against the job titles available in the Euraxis databases. This led to a final list 
under the 15 occupations part of ESCO, uh, which were then linked to the uh, skills defined uh, list. And you can see uh, how these occupations are broken down by sector, uh, with the majority of them being uh, belonging to the domain of science. Finally, some words about the use of artificial intelligence in ESCO. Um, mainly, uh, in ESCO has been uh, mainly an expert-driven classification. So the process for continuous improvement of ESCO is divided in substantially three phases: so a collection of input, analysis of the input, and then scoping and updated for classification. And all these three phases were mainly uh, performed through the support of experts, domain experts, sector organizations, supporting the commission in the update of ESCO. Data science uh, techniques and artificial intelligence can be applied to create uh, uh, value and improve efficiencies in all the phases of the continuous improvement cycle. When we look at the uh, collection of inputs, uh, it is important uh, to streamline the different data formats to make sure that the input submitted to uh, the ESCO Secretariat and to the Commission is uh, following a format that allows processing. And to this end, it is important to uh, analyze large amounts of data. This input is also very important to uh, create and train specific models that can be used to analyze vacancy data and provide uh, intelligence on the changes happening in the labor market uh, in terms of new occupation and training. When it comes to the analysis of the inputs received, uh, data science can support the removal of redundant information, and in particular, it can support detecting what is already included in ESCO, what are the competencies that are already uh, part of the classification, that are already addressed in the classification, and what instead is missing and should be included. And of course, uh, data science has a, a strong role to play in updating the classification, for example, by supporting terminological development, uh, using vacancy data to identify alternative labels and synonyms. Uh, it is used for content labeling, as we saw in the case of the green skills, it is in data science as a strong potential to support labeling of skills. It is used for translations, and it is used to establish relationships between occupations and skills and between uh, broader and narrower skills, leading to skills contextualization. It is therefore very important to support uh, human validation and human uh, input uh, for the data of ESCO to couple this with the use of data science techniques. Thank you very much for your attention.